Hi everyone! Welcome back to my little corner of the internet where I talk about whatever I want, but mostly movies and TV. I am looking rough today, this lipstick is not doing me any favors, and my nose is super red because allergies are evil, but... Hi! <laughs> so, also I've tried to angle my setup a little bit. Um, I know my window is like super bright, which is nice, but not great for filming. Um, enough rambling! Let's start talking. <laughs> a few months ago, Netflix released a movie called Look Both Ways. And when I saw the trailer, it gave me like huge flashbacks to the 1998 movie Sliding Doors, starring um, Gwyneth Paltrow and John Hanna. I love that movie, so I was pretty hesitant about watching this new movie. But I'm curious, and now that I have a public outlet for my rants. I decided why not watch the movie I love and watch this one and see how it you know stacks up. So that's exactly what I did and here are my thoughts. So first um, I'm gonna make it like first half of the video spoiler free, second half of the video spoilers and I'll put like a big spoiler warning thing before I get into spoiler territory. So if you haven't seen the movies yet, you can still join the fun. And if you have, then even better. All right. So yes, let's start with the OG sliding doors. Okay. So for those who don't know, the story here is this. Helen, Gwyneth Paltrow, works in a PR firm. And one morning she goes to work and ends up getting fired because she borrowed some bottles of Smirnoff from the office for her birthday over the weekend and even though she bought replacements they ousted her and too bad she's fired. Anyway, as she goes to take the subway back home, um, the story's timeline basically splits into two. You have one story where she makes the train and one story where she misses it, okay? And the entire time you get to watch both of the stories unfold for better and for worse. It's a really, really fun concept, and honestly, Gwyneth Paltrow is really good in this. Makes you wonder why, you know, she decided to stop acting and go sell candles scented like her vagina instead. Anyway, John Hanna is also awesome, and I love his accent, and, you know, I don't think he's your typical male lead in a rom-com, but it really works, and it's great. The whole movie... <laughs> is really really self-contained and very tight with like a runtime of just about an hour and a half a little bit more and things move pretty quickly in both stories and you get a like you get dramatic endings for both and some entanglements towards the end it's great stuff really also in terms of the soundtrack they have aqua's turn back time and dido's thank you so perfection all right now, let's do a bit of an overview on the other movie. So Look Both Ways was released this year, 2022, and stars Lily Reinhardt of Riverdale fame as Natalie. She's a college student that after a one night stand with her friend, takes a pregnancy test. And the movie splits into two in that section. So what if she is pregnant and what if she isn't? I do wanna give it props for how, you know, it does do a good job with reminding us that even though the Natalie is pregnant plotline, she still has a choice to, you know, end the pregnancy. And there's no, like, preachiness involved, even though the whole thing takes place in Texas and you would expect it. Like, it's, it's, it's handled well and I appreciated that. Unfortunately, though, that's one of the few things that the movie does well. The movie is almost two hours long and you feel every minute. It drags so much. Oh my god. I thought, I, I honestly thought it would never end. I paused it and did other things every time. I was like, wait, it's only been this long. Wait, it's only been this. It's, oh my god, terrible. On top of that, the lows in the story aren't that low and the highs are way too high. Like, it's, it's a very optimistic, let's do the mega happy ending type of movie. And as for the soundtrack, right, they basically use the one song 
by fun, you know, the tonight, I don't want to get copyrighted, but the tonight we are young, and they use it three separate times in the movie, it's a bit much, and also twice is a cover, and it's not a great cover. So yeah, it's, there's nothing much that the movie adds to the premise of this, like, the same concept of those movies, where you're like, oh, this is better, I like this one. It's just very, very surface level. Nothing bad or dramatic ever really happens. It's kind of like, woe is me most of the time. And then she gets very lucky very quickly. And it's kind of not as fun to watch. It's not entertaining enough, in my opinion. So yes, if you haven't watched the movies and don't want to know more, this is where I leave you. So this, actually, this is where you leave me. I'll miss you. But if you want to watch one, um, I say watch Sliding Doors. It's better in every way. But if you have time to kill, I guess you can watch both. I won't stop you. <laughs> All right, then. You have been warned. We are going to spoiler territory. I'm going to be talking about the full-on plots of both movies. So let's go. Three, two, one. Bye, guys. Hi, guys. All right. So in Sliding Doors... You know, her catching the train, right, means that she meets James, John Hannah, and also finds her boyfriend in bed with another woman. Super! So they break up and she goes to live with her best friend. She gets a great post-breakup hairstyle. Super fun. And she goes to a hairdresser to do it, which is great. She starts hanging out with James Moore, who encourages her to start her own PR company and things go well for her until her ex comes back and begs to have her back and of course you know James has to witness this and things get a little bit icy and then on top of that she finds out that James is actually married so that's traumatic but of course he then tells her in a wonderful typical rom-com scene where it's pouring rain and they're all busy confessing to each other that he's actually separated from his wife and he's just keeping up appearances because his mother is in the hospital and it's for her sake and you know they're like she's a nice woman i they kind of like that you know she's it's not an evil divorce it's just they don't get along but also plot twist he doesn't know that helen is pregnant with his baby Ooh. but yeah so, of course, it's pouring rain in, in a rom-com movie, so they kiss and make up. And then she, remember, it's 98, so no cell phones, or like, really not a lot of cell phones around. So she goes to the payphone on the other side of the street to call her friend to let her know that she's fine. But of course, um, she then gets hit by a car. And on the other side of the story, right, when she misses the train, she... A, she gets mugged while trying to catch a taxi, she gets injured, and she goes home basically a lot later, right? So she's oblivious to the fact that her boyfriend is cheating on her. By the way, he's cheating on her with his ex, so that's fun. She then starts working two jobs, like waitressing and sandwich making, because there are no PR jobs, and... She's basically grinding to support herself and her useless boyfriend who is supposed to be writing a novel but is in fact just spending his time with what's her name? Lydia, which is his ex. Or with his friend that keeps making fun of him, which actually is pretty funny. So this version of Helen right, also gets pregnant with her boyfriend and after trying and failing several times to inform said boyfriend of it, she also ends up getting an interview for a PR job and she's very excited and then meanwhile I'm jumping back and forth trying to you know thing but useless boyfriend I think his name is Jerry but nobody cares he ends up getting dumped by Lydia that means that when Helen who's been getting very suspicious finally flat out asks him you know are you having an affair he very confidently can say no because he is not currently having an affair he you know ended well things ended gotta love technicalities and grammar but Lydia being a very one-dimensional character is very vindictive and 
apparently is also pregnant because nobody heard of contraceptives in this movie. It's very annoying. But okay. She asks Jerry to come over because she wants to tell him that she's pregnant. And it's on the same day as Helen's job interview. Helen goes off to the job interview. At the same time, Jerry goes off to Lydia. And lo and behold, who is conducting the interview, if not Lydia herself? who now sees that Jerry has been cheating on her. And so she is very upset, she tries to get away, and then Jerry trying to, you know, to grab her and things, she ends up falling down the stairs and also ending up in the hospital. Fantastic. So no matter what happens, both plot lines, woman gets injured. Now, both of our Helens are in the hospital, and both of our Helens end up losing their babies, which, you know, sad. But only car crash thriving Helen dies, which when I watched this movie when I was younger, I was so upset about it. I was like, the one happy Helen is the one that has to die? What does it mean, you know? But okay, Stairs Helen ends up surviving the fall and she breaks up with Jerry, which is very good. Finally, you know, we, we get to this point. And then when she's discharged from the hospital, we see her get into the elevator where... James is also in the elevator because he visited his mother. And the movie ends with them looking at each other with a huge sense of like déjà vu. It's great. You get a uh, wonderful, you know, highs and lows for both stories. Even though, you know, like I said, successful Helen is the one that dies. You also, it's not too late for down on her luck, Helen. She can pick herself up from there. So the ending feels like a, another new beginning. It's optimistic and open. And I like that. It's, it feels like another adventure is going to happen. With Look Both Ways, Natalie has this dream of becoming a successful animator in LA. She has a five-year plan. It's really important that she has a five-year plan, okay? So of course, pregnant Natalie decides to stay in Texas and have the baby. So, you know, five-year plan out the window. The baby daddy Gabe is super supportive and while they're not together, they co-parent and it's, it's really nice to see, right? But unfortunately, Natalie gets super depressed, feeling like she's missing out on a lot in her life, right? She's a 22-year-old woman who accidentally gets pregnant. And so she stops drawing, and then on top of that, she also gets postpartum depression, which sucks. So her mom ends up cutting her hair because she needs a change, and she hates the cut because it makes her look like a mom. And the entire time, she doesn't work, she just raises her daughter, she lives with her parents. Gabe gets a place of his own and wants them to move in together because he's very much in love with her the entire time, you can see. But she's so scared that things would change or get worse that she just, she's like, no, 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 and pushes him to go and date other people. And, of course, she immediately re regrets it because she loves him too, but... And after a while, you know, she starts to get back into drawing and she starts drawing this comic strip about a night owl, which was the nickname that they gave their daughter because, you know, her days and nights were flipped when she was a baby. And this whole story fold, like unfolds in a span of like five years, right? Again, five year plan. She submits her strip somewhere and it gets a huge bump in publicity by being on a list of comics to watch out for. She then gets invited to speak at a panel at South by Southwest and of course ends up with Gabe and they live happily ever after. Hooray! Not pregnant Natalie goes to LA with her best friend and gets a job as an assistant to a famous animator she admires. She starts dating this guy Jake, who works with her and things seem to go well until she submits her portfolio to her boss and said boss says that she doesn't have a unique point of view and she should actually, you know, quit and work on getting a point of view. So uh, Natalie takes this very hard and at the same time her boyfriend is up in Canada working on a documentary and they break up because long distance sucks. So then she starts working on her own animated short and submits it to South by Southwest and it ends up getting chosen to be screened at the festival. It's a huge success. Jake comes back just to see it and they get back together and Lucy, the former boss, is very impressed and asks her to come back. Happy ending all around. 
Then the movie ends with both versions of Natalie going back to the bathroom where the pregnancy took place. They look at the mirror and both say something along like, you turned out okay. I don't know, like having described the movie to you, I don't know why this version doesn't do it for me at all, but it, it really doesn't. And it's not only that the movie feels super long, I feel like the stories or the struggles maybe were too similar. Like it's nice that they ended both with happy endings because it tries to show that having a baby or not having a baby is not the end of the world and I appreciate that but I think that the final scene was just so on the nose and unnecessary. It could have just ended with both couples just walking off, you know? As, especially since when you think about it, for not pregnant Natalie, this would not have been such a pivotal moment in her life where she desperately needs to go back to that spot and reevaluate her choices. Right? I think that the story spanning five years is also a bit much, but I get that it's a callback for her to her five-year plan and how regardless of what version, things did not go according to that plan. But actually, you know what? If they had to have a reflective moment, like the bathroom scene, I think that would have been a good one, like a five-year... Her looking at her five-year plan and saying something like, well... It may not have gone according to plan, but it was a good run anyway. Something like that, you know. That would make more sense than the bathroom scene. Things happen in life that for one version might be like pivotal, but for another it really isn't. So, but the five-year plan getting messed up happened to both. And it could be a much stronger reflective moment, in my opinion. Also, I think the ending for this movie is a lot more final, even though the two versions stay separate, I don't see a new story develop. So it's very much like the end. I don't know why it doesn't feel as satisfying, but it really doesn't. But yeah, what about you? Did you watch these movies? If you didn't watch both, which one did you watch? And what is a moment in your life that you think would have worked for such a scenario? You know, let me know in the comments below. And of course, please like, subscribe, share, comment. That would mean the world to me. And I'll see y'all next time.